Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel should take control of the Philadelphia Corridor on Gaza's border with Egypt. The corridor is a 14-kilometer strip of land on the southern end of Gaza. The Philadelphia Corridor, or to put it more correctly, the southern stoppage point of Gaza, must be in our hands. It must be shut. It is clear that any other arrangement would not ensure the demilitarization that we seek. Let's take a closer look now at the Philadelphia Corridor. Israel says one of the purposes of the corridor is to monitor the movement of goods and people between Egypt and the Gaza Strip and to search for weapons. Israel believes there are hundreds of smuggling tunnels there and has previously conducted military operations to destroy them. But it was established as a buffer zone under the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty of 1979. Israel controlled the corridor until 2005, when it withdrew from the Strip. After which, Egyptian security forces began patrolling the area. Two years later, Hamas came into power in Gaza. Both Egypt and Hamas strongly oppose Israel's control over the corridor because it would effectively sever the Gaza Strip's only land connection to Egypt. Rami Khoury is the Director of Global Engagement at the American University of Beirut. He joins us live now from Boston. Welcome to the program. Uh, first, let me ask you, how significant do you think is Benjamin Netanyahu's statement about the Philadelphia Corridor? You know, it's hard to take uh, anything that Netanyahu says totally factually. Um, but he's constantly negotiating. He's constantly boasting. He's bluffing. He's... Uh, uh, appealing to different audiences. Uh, he wants his domestic audience to feel reassured. He wants to scare the uh, the Palestinians. Uh, he wants to negotiate with the Egyptians. He wants to get more support from the Americans. So anything he says has multiple audiences, multiple purposes, and should, should not be taken at face value. But we do know that the, there's two things that the Israelis have always wanted since the creation of their state in 1948. They want um, a territory and security, a territory for security to be secure. <clears throat> and they want to, um, in many phases, including this government, expand the land of the state of Israel to include what they call parts of the biblical land of Israel. So they have this messianic, biblical, theological drive, and they have the security drive. Neither of those has ever really brought them security. The more that they expand, the more they control land, the more they try to be secure by taking over people's lands, driving people out of their homes, the less secure they become because they just instigate greater and more intense forms of resistance by Palestinians and, and by other people, Lebanese that happened with Hezbollah and Lebanon and in Palestine with Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Uh, so we have to just take this as one element that he's throwing into the negotiating pot because there are serious negotiations going on to resolve the immediate issues, which is the, uh, the Israeli genocidal assault on Gaza, the uh, prisoners and hostages and detainees on both sides uh, to get a ceasefire. All these things have to be negotiated, and then maybe what comes after that. So this is I see this purely as one more uh, element he's throwing in there uh, to, uh, to be negotiated. And, and with, uh, he, and with that element, forgive me, with that element, I mean, how much tension does that uh, potentially create amongst uh, other regional players like Egypt? Well, the Egyptians will not accept uh, giving that uh, territory to, uh, to Netanyahu, to the Israelis. Um, they negotiated in 1979 with the Egyptian-Israeli Peace Treaty, and that uh, corridor was created. They agreed that Egypt would patrol it, I think, with 750 troops and all kinds of uh, specified arms. Um, uh, they don't seem to have done a very good job because there's all these tunnels underneath it and, and Hamas and traders and uh, students and people needing medical aid uh, can come in and out of Gaza using that area. Uh, and that's what uh, Israel presumably wants to uh, stop, and, and Hamas and the Palestinians in Gaza want to not stop it because it's their only outlet to the world. Uh, the Israelis control the sea in the west and the north and the east of Gaza. The south is the only part that leads Gaza right onto an Arab territory. It's also where the leaders of Gaza, uh, of Hamas and other groups, uh, community leaders, uh, 
you know, educators, industrialists, whatever, uh, they can come in and out of Gaza using that route. So given, uh, given, what, given what you say then, what could this mean for the population of Gaza going ahead who are already suffering so much from this war? Well, this is, again, an unknown because we're in the middle of, a, of an intense uh, military assault by Israel and an in intense diplomatic negotiation. And in the context of both of those, both sides are going to say things that try to give them more advantage. <laughs> Hamas doesn't speak too much in public. It makes statements through its official spokesperson once uh, every few days, and occasionally some of their leaders in Lebanon and, um, and Qatar and, and in Egypt make a statement, but not too much. The, the Israeli politicians are totally different, Netanyahu in particular. Um, he, he's never seen a television camera that he doesn't fall in love with, and he, he loves to speak, and, and, and he's, he's trying desperately to show how tough he is, how this time we're really going to destroy Hamas, which he said four times before, using military force. This time he's using much more drastic force, destroying the whole society, the schools, the hospitals, the water systems. Uh, but this is part of it. You have to see him as part of this sort of performance, political performance. It's serious stuff. We're talking, you're talking about a state that was uh, attacked on October 7th to a limited extent, uh, and then it responded with this massive, <clears throat> unlimited uh, assault back on, uh, on Gaza. But this is a political process, uh, and he wants to make it a point to his people uh, that, that this is uh, what he's going to do, because there's a huge amount of opposition to him inside Israel. Also, he may be doing this partly to uh, come up with a negotiating uh, point, uh, a card that he can uh, trade in to get more arms from the U.S. Maybe the Egyptians will, uh, will play along at some point and get more aid if they allow something. Maybe they'll say, let's do joint patrols. I'm just guessing. I, I have no evidence for this. But I don't think so. I don't think people want to give Israel more co territorial control of Arab lands. We want them to get out of the Arab lands and shift into a political negotiation, which would give the Israelis and the Palestinians their full rights, like the Egyptians got their full rights when they made peace with Israel. So given, um, given what you say what... then, forgive me, given what you say, how does this Philadelphia corridor issue play into Israel's overall military strategy in its war on Gaza? Well, they think Israel thinks it's very important because they feel that it, Hamas has been getting a lot of its military equipment through there. But if they're going to destroy Hamas, as they say, then, you know, that Hamas is not going to be there to get more equipment. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, to me at least. Uh, the uh, future of Gaza is going to be part of Palestine that includes the West Bank and maybe down the road parts of East Jerusalem, we'll see. Uh, th these are all factors that have to be negotiated, and there's no way you can guess what they are uh, now. But there's, uh, Gaza, clearly, he says they want, he wants, Netanyahu says that Gaza has to be demilitarized. Um, and he used a crazy term the other day that the population has to be de-radicalized. I mean, this is television, CNN stuff. This is performance for uh, for the world. It is not serious political uh, statesmanship. Um, so, we, but this it does give you a hint that security is so important to them, which is understandable given what they suffered uh, under white racist Europeans and Russians and North Americans uh, 70, 80, 100 years ago. Security is so important to them um, that they want to defend it. And they see land controlling other people's lands as bringing them security. But it doesn't. So they're still, they, they're obsessed with this. And this is another way they've done this. And they tried in Lebanon. They controlled Gaza. They got out of Gaza. They got out of Lebanon. They still encircle Gaza. But they want this piece of land because it will give them total encirclement of Gaza. It will have no, it will leave no outlet for the people of Gaza to come and go uh, without having to pass through some kind of Israeli uh, checkpoint. And this is not going to be acceptable. Hamas won't accept it, the PA won't accept it, nobody will accept this. We'll leave it there for now. Rami Akuri, thank you very much indeed for your insights here on Al Jazeera. Thank you.